everybody this is James from Titan Drones Inc. Uh, I'm going to show you how to mod your controller uh, to be able to work with the uh, with the command case. Um, first let's start with the tools that you're going to need. I recommend having a, uh, a pair of uh, tweezers. Uh, this is a nylon removal tool or a nylon pick. This is a number two Phillips head. This is a small flathead, a T6 Torx screwdriver, needle nose pliers, and flush head cutters. You have your internal remote control cables. You have your replacement adhesive for your rubber bumpers, which we're going to need to take off to access the screws. And then you have your QMA plugs, which is going to make for a nice uh, clean install, which we'll get to. Alright, whenever working with sensitive electronics, we like to have an anti-static mat that's grounded. We also like to have an anti-static wristband. This is going to help you when you open this up not to damage your sensitive electronics. Alright, we're going to start by removing these rubber bumpers. Um, that's going to allow us to have access to the screws that are behind here. I recommend using your nylon pick for this so you don't mar your plastics. It's always a good idea to have a, a little storage bin handy so you don't lose any parts. Now on the bottom here you're going to be removing the two rubber caps. There's two more screws under there. If you need to you may need to use your tweezers or a smaller pick. And there you have it. All right, right here you'll notice your I.O. cap and it has four small screws around the perimeter. Those small screws are uh, T6 Torx screws. So you're gonna wanna use, uh, obviously, your T6 Torx screwdriver to remove those. All right, once your T6 uh, screw screws are removed from the perimeter, you're gonna pry off the I.O. cap. All right, you'll notice inside here, the main component to pay attention to is your ribbon cable here. To remove the ribbon cable, you're going to pry up on the black uh, retainer clip, like so. All right, now using a nylon removal tool uh, or a small pick, you're going to pry down on the connector uh, to remove it from its retaining clip. All right, now you're going to take your number two Phillips screwdriver and you are going to remove the four Phillips screws that are on the perimeter of your controller um, and this is where this is under where we took off the rubber bumpers all right now that you have all of your fasteners undone what you're going to do is you're going to find the parting line in your controller it runs around the whole perimeter and you are going to grab onto the base of the controller and you're going to gently pull it apart. Now that it's apart, you'll notice your battery cable is still connected. You're going to want to remove that. So gently press on the tab and you'll be able to gently pull out that cable. All right, on the middle of your uh, controller on the right side, you'll notice these two antenna connectors. You're going to want to remove these. And they just push straight out if you can get your nylon pick under the head. Now that your antenna connections are out of the way, you'll notice one of two screws that we're going to be removing. That's going to make our life a little bit easier when fishing the cables. So remove this screw. The other one is going to be right here on your left. Go ahead and remove that screw. Now we're going to remove the factory antennas. Uh, you'll notice here is a, a retainer clip. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your needle nose pliers and you're going to want to compress that retainer clip and pull your antenna out. All 
All right, now you're going to want to feed uh, or fish your uh, new cables through the holes where you took out the factory antennas. Now, I like to feed the cables uh, along the same route that the factory cables came out of, uh, but you can route them how you see fit. Just make sure uh, to stay clear of the moving parts from your RC knobs. They are mechanical. All right, to run the cable uh, through the right hole, uh, what you're going to want to do to make it a little bit easier is uh, take your Phillips head screwdriver and you're going to unscrew this screw here uh, to remove the, uh, the uh, scroll wheel. So what, to run your uh, new antenna cable on the right side, you're going to want to fish it through the hole where your factory antenna came out. And then you're going to want to go around the right side. And you're going to be following a similar path to what the, uh, to what the factory antenna is. That's what I like to do anyway. All right, now that you have your wires fished to connect the antenna connectors, you're going to want to push on the head of the connector until you hear it snap in place. Just like that. And you'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, now that your cable is run on the right side, you're going to want to take your, your, um, your wheel and you're going to want to reattach it with the screw. Okay, now that you've run your cables, um, it's time to install your QMA adapter, uh, and it's uh, a clamshell design that's going to surround the nut on the QMA jack, just like that. And then what you'll do is you'll hold that in place while you take the nut that came with your QMA adapter or your QMA plug, and you screw that down, tighten it up. All right, now we can push the QMA uh, adapter into place. When you're doing this, uh, since you're going to be applying some pressure, use your other hand to give some support to the top of the controller. Okay, now that we have the left side assembled, uh, now it's time to push it in as well. Remember to give the controller some support. And there you go. All right, you'll notice uh, several ribbon cables here. If you happen uh, to dislodge one during installation, uh, don't panic. What you need to do is just grab your, uh, your uh, pliers here, um, and there's a little uh, film tab on it they put at the top. So just grab those and take your tweezers uh, and push it back into place. They're also numbered, so uh, number two obviously just goes right back in the number two connector, and it literally just pushes in, and that's it. All right, now it's time to put the controller back together. Uh, remember to attach your battery cable at the bottom. Just snaps in. Uh, and now um, your ribbon cable is gonna have to run back through your uh, IO um, ports on the back. So grab it with your uh, tweezers and that's gonna allow you to put the back of the controller back and allow you to, to fish it up through the bottom. All right, once you got your ribbon cable uh, fished through, uh, now make sure that you have your uh, shell clamped back together. You're gonna do this before you uh, secure all your screws. Next, install the four perimeter Phillips head screws. Now that your perimeter screws are secured, you are going to reattach the ribbon cable. Be as gentle as possible. Just try to guide it back into its connector. All right, once you have your um, ribbon cable uh, inside of its connector, you're going to want to secure it by pushing forward on the black retainer clip. Just like that. Now take your I.O. cap and place it back over your connections. 
and you're going to secure it with your four Torx T6 screws. All right, now that you have everything back together, it's time to put the uh, rubber bumpers back on. Um, sometimes if you have enough um, uh, tape left on there and it's sticky enough, uh, you can just you know reapply them and, and press down and, and see if it'll stay. Um, however, we like to we like to put new tape on there um, just to make sure there's there's no uh, there's no issues in the future. All right, to install the uh, new tape, um, simply peel it away from its backing. We have this for you already cut to size to fit your controller. Uh, apply it to the, the back of the rubber bumper. Right. Then peel the backing paper off. And reapply it to your remote control. Uh, and now you're going to want to reinstall the rubber plugs that go over the screws on the bottom. And those just push right back in. After that, you are all set. Your control is going to look something like that. If you took your tablet mount off, uh, you can re-secure that. Now your controller has been successfully modified and it will now work with our command case ground station.